If you're new to wood turning, or you're thinking about getting into the craft, you're probably hearing the word spindle get thrown around a lot. And you might not totally understand what it means. So here it is. A spindle is any turning that's longer than it is thick. It's usually turned with the end grain between centers, and the wood that's actually facing you is side grain. So if you've seen any round part of a chair, a leg, or part of the back, those are spindles. A pen is a spindle. A magic wand is a spindle. And because spindles aren't that big, and you're mostly turning side grain, which is pretty forgiving, spindles are a great place for a beginner to start. And if you're going to be doing a lot of spindles, an excellent tool to use is a spindle gouge. Spindle gouges are often the primary tool of spindle work. Not always. Some people really favor other tools, like the skew chisel. I've got a whole video on the skew chisel. You can watch it if you're curious about that. Me, I like the spindle gouge. I find them relatively easy and safe to use. The main thing you do with a spindle gouge is turn coves and beads, and these are easy to understand too. A cove is any depression or concavity in the wood, and a bead is just the opposite. It's a round place where the wood sticks out. Most of the details you turn on a spindle are some variation of a cove, a bead, or a combination of the two. After the wood is roughed out with the roughing gouge, you often do layout by turning shoulders with a parting tool. I've got a video on that if you're interested. Then, once you've got some shoulders, which gives you a place to turn into, the spindle gouge can come in and do the coves and the beads. To understand how the tool works, let's just talk about the parts of the tool, just for a second. The slanted part of the tool, where it's sharpened, is referred to as the bevel. The shaft of the tool is roughly circular in cross-section, and it's got a big groove milled out of the top. That groove, which is usually U-shaped or kind of C-shaped, is called the flute. And people will talk about having the flute open or the flute closed. Flute open means with the flute facing up. Flute closed means with the tool turned 90 degrees, so you really can't see the flute from your position turning. Turning basic coves and beads is not complicated. If you wanted to turn a bead, you would lay it out with a pencil and then with the parting tool to define the shoulders. Then, with the flute open or facing up, you'd ride the bevel on the work and then slowly turn the edge of the tool into the work while rolling it sideways to the closed position. This is called rolling a bead. It's not very difficult, and it's usually done in several successive passes, sneaking up on the finished result. Not one big crazy pass where you hog off all the material at once. That would be dangerous, and the end result would be bad. Making a cove is the exact opposite. You start with the gouge in the closed position, with the flute at 90 degrees. You go in, at a straight 90 degree angle, and then slowly roll the gouge on its bevel over until you have the flute open, or facing up. And that'll give you a cove. Now, this is a super quick overview of the tool. I'll link to a couple of better videos in the description where really expert spindle turners can show you all the nuances of coves and beads. This video is just about explaining the tool and how it works. Compared to the other tools I'm covering in this series, the spindle gouge is a little bit more complicated to sharpen. But it's not rocket science, so don't get intimidated. There are basically two grinds you have to consider. One of them is called the traditional grind. This is a symmetrical 45 degree grind. It's pretty much exactly what you have on your roughing gouge. And you achieve it by putting the tool into an arm jig, like the Wolverine, and just rotating it back and forth until you have an even bevel all the way around the tool. This is the way spindle gouges were sharpened for a long time, but very few people use this grind now. Instead of the traditional grind, most turners now use a thing called the Irish grind, which is also called the fingernail grind. And if you compare it to a fingernail, the gouge actually does look a lot like one. And what's happened here is that the wings, which is what we call the sides of the bevel, have been swept back, so that the bevel has a little bit more of a point to it, even though it's still a gradual oval shape. And the edge and the bevel are much larger and longer. That allows the tool to be more delicate and get into more tight spaces, and those longer wings give you more control and more bevel that you can ride against the work. Exactly how to shape that fingernail grind is beyond the scope of this video, but again, I'll link to something down in the description. You get your basic geometry freehand, and then for grinding and sharpening while you're turning, you typically set it up in a jig, like this one. Now, this is the Wolverine version, which you can buy. It works really well, and I'll link to it down in the description, along with all the other tools and materials I talk about in this video. If you don't feel like shelling out the money for the Wolverine, lots of turners make their own jig. I did. It wasn't very difficult. So, when I'm sharpening my gouge, I put it in one of these little homemade holders here. 
I get the geometry set up correctly. I put the end of the holder in the arm part of the jig, set the tool against the wheel, and just sweep it back and forth very lightly a couple of times. The combination of the arm and the jig preserves the geometry and takes off the minimum amount of metal each time I sharpen. A couple of quick passes and I'm ready to turn. The spindle gouge isn't exactly an easy tool to learn, but it's not super difficult either. If you practice for a couple of days, you'll probably pick up all the major points without a lot of trouble, and there's tons of resources on the internet if you run into trouble. If you're new to turning, I highly recommend the spindle gouge as your main spindle shaping tool. It'll do all sorts of complex shapes and details, and it's not very dangerous or particularly difficult to use. Some turners favor the skew chisel, and I've got a whole video on that, but I find the skew to be much more difficult to learn and probably somewhat more dangerous. So for my spindle turning, I just stick with the spindle gouge. If topics like this interest you, you might want to pick up my book, One Week to Wood Turning. It's a complete guide to all the gear you need to get started in the craft. I cover lathes, grinders, tools, sharpening, shop setup, safety, dust collection, and a million other really useful topics. With my book, you seriously can get started wood turning in one week. If you're interested in more information about that, go to rexkruger.com slash book and check it out. If you're interested in learning more about the parting tool, grab the tip sheet. It's a one-page illustrated guide to the tool with a bunch of different specifics, sharpening angles, and extra tips. You can find it at rexkruger.com slash articles or click on the link. It's totally free. And finally, I'm doing a whole series of videos on individual turning tools. So if you found this interesting, click the link for the playlist and watch the rest of them. And hey, Thanks a lot for watching.